welcome everyone to the 125th episode of the Have Aloha Will Travel Podcast. I'm your co-host Kevin Allen with me as always. Catherine Todd Fox and uh, we are with Hawaii Magazine and apologies for my voice. I got sick over winter oh. break. Everyone's getting sick. Yeah. Something's going around. Well, you have uh, well, have you gotten sick? Well, you know what? Wow, shucks. You just said it. You, oh, yeah. You well, jinxed you me. Will. Knock on wood. Knock on my wood veneer. Uh, no, I haven't gotten sick in a little bit. Uh, mm. it's, yeah, it's been a little bit, but it's a, it's an interesting episode, this episode. Um, you say we are with Hawaii Magazine, but I guess at the time of this recording, the time of the release of this episode, uh, you are with Hawaii Magazine. I am. I'm not. Um, this is my last episode. Uh, it's your second last it's episode. my second last episode Let's just which be is why clear I, about that. I know which is why it's like this is so ridiculous <laughs> doing this again like i don't know i've died once and now i'm like i came back and you know i'm i'm leaving again but uh yeah I'm, i've left again <laughs> <laughs> I, I left i came back i'm leaving again uh it's a whole thing uh, maybe i'll come back i don't know um but uh yeah i've left again so we thought we would just talk about i don't know talk shop for 20 minutes like we always do um but just maybe about some of the things I enjoyed at my tenure at Hawaii Magazine again I think we did the my first leaving episode was exactly about this was like the things I remember about my time so I'm going to do that again <laughs> I have different things though I think well it was different you came back um I and came back, back as yeah. editor I did yeah I did come back as editor um and uh that was a that was a, a really funny you know I learned a lot uh, in that experience I think I learned maybe what I want out of a job and maybe what I <laughs> which is not want. to be editor <laughs> which is to not be editor yeah I mean being <laughs> editor is cool because you have a cool title and you know all that jazz but uh I don't know it, it's fun to kind of run around a little bit more um and maybe as editor you don't get to run around just as much you're kind of the one telling people to run around and, and all that jazz but um but yeah I mean I still did plenty of running around. I mean, I think my last story, um, one of my last print features actually, um, which I really enjoyed, um, was with uh, Aaron Yoshino, our staff photographer and I uh, went over to Kwe'i. Uh, we did the Kwe'i Raceway Park um, uh, story for a, for a feature that I think is in the issue that is coming out now, next month. Mm -hmm. Kat? Next month, I think. Next month, right? Hopefully. Yep. yep. Hopefully. We'll see what yeah. happens. Um, you never know. Uh, but uh, yeah, and that was that was like a super cool story. Um, it was at the Quay Raceway Park, and it was to kind of do do a little bit of a spotlight, a little bit of a profile on uh all these people who are just crazy about drag racing. Like they just love it to death. And um, you know, I think as like a writer, and I think as someone who uh kind of was in the journalism field for for some time um that 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 subject has always been the most interesting thing to me and what i really enjoy about the writing and and being a writer and being a journalist is kind of giving light to a community um that is kind of niche i guess or like a small community of very very um very enthusiastic people um so that was kind of like a big encapsulation of that because i mean it's a very niche community on quite these you know guys who drag race and they spend all this money and all this time and all this effort um to you know race a card as fast as they can for about eight seconds and then and then they're done um but it's it was such a cool community and and everyone was really fantastic um you know i i really enjoy uh, about the job too was kind of meeting new people and just talking to new people and and for the most part they're they're always really wonderful um so yeah that was that was a lot of fun um so that's that was something cool that I got to do as editor uh, of Hawaii Magazine. Kat, you're editor now of Hawaii Magazine. Again, right, right. I feel like you're this editor again. Yeah, this job, but just we go back and forth on. <laughs> right, you were you were editor, and then I stepped in as editor, and now you, and then now you're, ed <laughs> now I know. you're editor again. It's my head is spinning. Yeah, I yeah. mean, yeah, I, I feel recycled. Um, yeah, I mean, tell it's, me about it. It's no different. I mean, you know, we, it's just, it's interesting because I feel like you and I not are the original team, but like you were there, I was there before you, then I left. Yeah. And then yeah. you were there for a time when we had a, a completely different editorial staff. 
And, you know, we've seen the magazine change, like we've seen it go from, you know, six issues down to four issues and we survived COVID and all that. And then you and I have seen what, two different art, three, no, two different art directors, maybe three, three different art directors, three different art directors, Yep. probably four different or five different digital specialists. Yeah. A lot of that was publishers. I feel like, I mean, even though we were together for about, I don't know, eight, no, not that long, five years or so. Five years, four or five maybe, years. Yeah. We were the solid ones and everybody just sort of came in and yeah. out, you know? It was funny. Yeah. Being at Hawaii Magazine, I felt like a, like a cockroach almost because I like nothing could kill me at the time. Like I was just True. staying alive, you know, just staying there. Um, And, you know, it's because I really enjoyed it and I really enjoyed the the brand and you know the people I was working with them and you know uh something that really did kind of like reinvigorate me too speaking about things that you know I've done recently as editor was um you know kind of no I don't want to say being at the front line or anything of the Maui response but um being a part of just a part of the general the overall response to the Maui fires I guess or just Mm -hmm. you know being a part of you know, being a part of an organiza- organization that was releasing articles on how people could help, um, you know, where people could donate, um, all that kind of stuff. That was, um, and I, you know, was editor at the time. And, you know, I think, you know, when you're kind of leading the charge on something like that, you take it really personally, I guess. Um, you know, it feels like, I don't know, feels like you can really make a, a positive difference, um, you know, putting putting out those articles. And, and you and I wrote quite a few articles on the subject of Maui and, um, you know, responsible travel and, and where people could buy things from Maui, you know, artists and, and everything like that. And just felt like kind of everything helped at that time. Um, so that was, that was kind of interesting for me, um, as editor to kind of like work through that process. And, but yeah, man, I mean, I, I started at Hoi Magazine as an intern, Mm -hmm. um, you know, in 20, I forget now, 2018, maybe uh, 20, late 2017. I was fresh out of a university of Hawaii. Uh, I got, got involved through the SPJ Society of Professional Journalists, um, the uh, Hawaii chapter, their internship program. Um, and yeah, I, I started with Hawaii Magazine as an intern and then was a staff writer for a little bit and then an associate and then an interim editor. And then I left briefly. And then I was the editor and then I left again. <laughs> so I somehow was able to fulfill pretty much every single editorial role at Hawaii magazine, or I was able except to touch our director, single, except for our director yeah, or digital media. But like when it came to like the pure editorial ladder, I was able to touch every, every step. And then I left, um, I well, except that. for managing editor. We, by the time I think I was there, we didn't have a managing editor, but uh, we used to have one of those at a uh, Hawaii magazine yeah. back in the day. Yeah. Filled by the likes of Matthew Denise and I forget, I can't, I can't name any. Were you managing editor with them? Mm-mm. When no? I was there, there was only an editor and they called it like the online editor. That's it. Oh, the online mm-hmm. editor. When those well, two things no were very social. distinct things, right? Yeah. So, you know, the editor handled the print and the online editor handled basically the oh, website. Interesting. There wasn't anything. Yeah, we didn't have any social media at the time. So right. that was very different back then. I was going to say, I mean, you know, you've been with the brand for a long time. You've seen it. You've seen it change. I mean, just like I think even editorially, it's changed a lot. Like we used to not even or we used to not do um, diacritics uh, online. Um mm-hmm. Until like relatively like recently, actually. I mean, mm-hmm. you were you were editor, I think, at the time when we started mm-hmm. doing that. But do you have any other big standout things that I guess are is so different about Hawaii magazine from back in the day? From back in the day. If we're um, just if we're just ruminating on old times sake. I know, right? Well, I mean, we used to have a nice office. Um <laughs> <laughs> and our ed- our editor had an office with a door and a view, which that doesn't wow. The editor had the off- oh, an yeah, office, an office, yeah. Really, wow. It was very fancy. Um, very fancy. I think you know we've seen the we've seen print decline, right? So 
there was a time when we had a like a huge like huge circulation numbers um we were the largest right magazine out of a Hawaii we had the, we had the largest circulation of any magazine that was published in Hawaii um and you know our our magazines were thick and we used to get postcards and you know people didn't email as much they would send and we didn't have you know Facebook so people right. would send us letters all the time right. and I remember you know that was a big thing getting all these letters and postcards and questions and people would um like for the photo contest, for example. So this year we're marking our 25th anniversary for the photo contest. We would get physical photos that we would have to go through uh, yeah. for that. And we don't do that anymore. So, you know, it's changed a lot, but I also think that our web has really grown. Our social media reach has really grown. So I think our audience is different. And now with the podcast, I mean, we're reaching a lot of Canadians, like that's right. something new. So that's cool. I mean, yeah, we're just kind of, it's just different in that regard that our audience is just changed. And and that's right. cool. And I think Hawaii isn't as mystical and um, foreign as it used to be as a destination. Right. And so um, I think that makes our jobs a little more challenging because we have to tell stories about Hawaii that maybe people don't know about. And right. you know, living here, it's sometimes it's hard. Like I think the Kauai drag race story is a good example. I mean, it's such a subculture that most visitors would not know about. I think a lot of local people don't even know about it. And that's our job, right? Is to find these stories to tell you. Right. Yeah, yeah. no, definitely. I, I I definitely agree. It's <laughs> like kind of, I mean, I feel like, yeah, everything on Hawaii that is popular has been reported on to death, right? Like the road to yeah. Hana has, we've, I mean, I've written probably four different articles about the road to Hana, probably about the same things, honestly. Like, it's it's interesting. So now, yeah, we live in a time where it's like, you really, even as like a creative, like in the media, you really have to look hard at like, what is something that people will not know about? Because, you know, I do tend to notice too, like our, our you know, very popular sub like subjects, like the road to Hana and Diamond Head and Waikiki, they, they always do well. People always want to read about that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But if you can find something really niche, that's really interesting, like Grace's um story on the 100 year old general store, the, Has uh, the Hasegawa store on Maui. Oh, you mean the um Hukulani uh, store? Hukulani. Yeah, 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 yeah. If you can find something niche like that, mm -hmm. but that is still super interesting, um, that has an appeal to to visitors or people who just really like what you, I mean, those articles really do well. Like that article did very, very well, um, you know, and I think it's like an online um, platform. We're, we're always looking for those articles that are going to do super duper well. Um, so yeah, it's been really interesting. Um, just kind of so funny too, because like, I'm pretty sure I'm honestly pretty sure that the article that got me hired at Hawaii Magazine uh, was my How to Throw a Shaka Story um, really? that I wrote. I wrote it as an intern and it got, it went viral. Like people oh. were calling me on my phone. Like people really, and they were like, did you write this? Your name's Kevin Allen. Did you write this? <laughs> like it was, that article got a ton of views at the time. That's so and I'm interesting. Like, in the back of my head, I'm always like, man, I wonder if how to, it was a stupid. I mean, it was a fun article. I we we did like gifts and stuff. That was with uh Elena and uh Tracy and and all the the old staff. And we did like gifts on like how to throw the shaka and stuff. Uh, right over at uh across the street from the office at the the Century Square or is it Century Square? What's that? You're talking That's about square. um, like where Powahi Tower is. What is that place called? Where the American Savings Bank is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't even yeah, remember. Yeah. I don't know. We live in a fully at home world oh i see the story you see this it ran, it's a yeah, good this story. Ran october 16th 2017 i'll make sure that's in our wow. show oh man that's crazy wow 2017 2017 you were that's like, like seven years i was like 10 years old you were 10 years old i was just i was like say. 10 years old my goodness gracious you were just you'll be able to make child. fun of me for being a child i'm not even a child anymore i'm 28 now are you really I'm getting pretty close to 30. Dude, you're almost 30. I know. It's kind of it's Oh, you're going to be gonna... 29 this year. Yeah, thanks for telling me about that. I definitely Your last know. year in your 20s, you know. Oh, yeah. My fat, my last full year in my 20s. Well, I'll make it count. I'm moving to Japan. I've got a band going. You know, 
we'll make it happen. Wait, before we get to that, I do want to say, okay, so your first story was a Hawaiian Kampachi, right? Hey, that one did really good too. People re- that yeah. the the Kampachi people still email me about that. Really? Yeah. If for some reason they must get new PR people or something, because like i I got an email from their old PR person who was like, this is the best like Kampachi because no, I guess no one really writes no stories about, writes about Hawaiian. It, yeah. And I, I specifically, you know, was talking about the uh merit culture. I forget the name now, but it was a it was a business that that you know farm raised these kampachi right um and they were like this is the best story anyone's ever written about hawaiian kampachi because no one writes about hawaiian kampachi and they're like can you send me a pdf because we want to get it framed and put it in our office what? <laughs> and i was like this is the most ridiculous thing i've ever heard and then actually it was last year i got another email from them being like, and it was a new pr person they're like this is a fantastic story about hawaiian kampachi can you send us a pdf because i didn't send the That's pdf so funny. Didn't. but i just find I find it so funny because it's like, I guess, yeah, no one wrote about Hawaiian Kampachi. I remember that for that article, I was going to be late to the interview because I had to find parking in Waikiki, which is always a, a crapshoot. Um, and it was, I had to interview the chef who um, made stuff with Hawaiian Kampachi. And he was at, uh, what's the White Lady um, Hotel in Waikiki? What's that one called oh, again? White or Lady. The, it's not the white lady what is it called the moana it's one of the i don't yeah maybe i don't know it's one of those middle ho- waikiki hotels like middle of the strip it's the one that does that tea brunch service outside it's one of the oldest hotels they do like a tea service but not the um, halakulani no not the halakulani no 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 i forget now it's okay but i had to run to that hotel in the middle of the day in Waikiki because I didn't want to be late to this interview because it was like my first interview for Hawaii Magazine. And I, by the time I got there, I was dripping in sweat. I was like, because it was like Waikiki at like 1 p.m. And holy smokes, like I was like full on from my neck to about right above my my nipples. I was like just covered in sweat. It was really gross. <laughs> yeah, that was, uh, that was when I was young. That was just when I was a young, chipper kid, you know, so I could go out and do that. I was 21 at the time. <laughs> we a young do, child. We shouldn't do episodes like this, Kat, because it really throws me into a pit of <laughs> a pit of what? weird looking back, despair, how young I used to be. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Don't oh, even... man. Wait, I'm going to look up your story right now and see what you're talking about. Oh, yeah. The Moana Beach House. Oh, it was the Moana. Moana. OK. Yeah. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. 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 I wonder if that chef's even there. Chef Luca or something. Luca's um, David, K, I think. Ella, he was there Lucella. for a while. Yeah. I don't know if he's I don't think he's still there, but he was there for a while. Anyway, this is very nice. He was very cool with me being super stinky and sweaty as I like ran over there. He's. Well, some of the other stories you've done, we you've written Beaky. <laughs> oh yeah, I did. We did a whole Beaky photo shoot, and you know what? Video. We did a whole video that never went up because it was COVID. And they also used me writing their Beaky in a, a press pack. They really? needed photography for it. Yeah, and they asked Aaron or something if they could use one of my photos because I was like writing it or something. And you know, it was also weird. I was writing it in like on jeans like black jeans and a and an aloha shirt and it, i still look at those photos and it just looks so uncomfortable because i'm like in the middle of waikiki again it's it so hot over there probably uncomfortable it was super uncomfortable yeah this is wow this is fun <laughs> what, what else um, have i written cat you, you've written about riding a bus around the island oh yeah that was when we used to do um oh I what, forget was, what, what that was that was section called, called? that was that a I fun section i used to like those illustrations because yeah. you guys would always do those little illustrations. I remember there was one with me and my cat and yeah. when I was playing the ukulele. Oh, shit. You got to send me that PDF. I I, I really want to swear on our podcast. It's the PG-13 swear. It's fine. Well, I guess so. In that um, in the back of book feature, you also wrote about shaping a board with your dad. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and your dad remember. got his first photo credit. He did. His... Yeah, I think he's actually gotten a couple other ones. If you look hard enough, you'll find Scott Allen. Um, <laughs> he, he's got a couple, I remember. I remember when there was big waves on the North Shore one day and the water was flowing over um, by Lani Akea's. It was The water was going like completely over Kamehameha Highway and stuff. He took a photo that we used. I think that was his second photo credit. He was really proud of that. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I remember that one, man. I never got, 
you know what? I thought I was going to get into surfboard shaping too. Like that was my big thing for a second. I bought all these tools and stuff. Never happened. Those tools now live under my parents' house. Oh my God. Well, it's you never sad. know. You could. What else did you do? Um, You did an open cage shark tour. I did. You forced me on that one. I did. That was a that was you forced me on a couple of things that I was really scared to death about, but were fun to at the at the end of the day. I mean, I I really enjoyed that open cage shark tour. I think if you're gonna see sharks, honestly, it's the way to see it, um, yeah. be, because they just swim up right on right on you, and it makes you real remember or makes you realize that like, you know, if you can see a shark, um, you're probably okay. Like if you can't see the shark, then you're in danger, um, because you know that's how they attack. Like you know they're but if you can like see a shark and they're just all swimming around underneath you, you're probably fine. You know, what you might not be probably fine though is if you have to walk down the freaking uh, skyscraper, uh, rappel down it. Oh that's yeah, what you made me do. And that was that was honestly the scariest I feel thing I've like ever you done. Bring this up yearly about it's a, it's it's literally like my hands are, are very just thinking wet about right it. Now. Just so thinking, Kevin, I, I get wet hands when I think about heights. It was for Special Olympics Hawaii. And we, um, you, repelled off the Sheraton Waikiki, which is high. It's like, it's I don't know high. how many stories, but it's a lot. It's very high. Yeah. yeah. When you're standing up on the roof, it's really the first step because you're standing up on the roof like this and you have to go like that because you're You go backwards or forward? Backwards, you go right? forward. Oh, really? Yeah, That's... you look right down the, like, and it, it was so <laughs> funny too, yeah, because like, you know, I was doing it with like the Miss Hawaii that year. I was just like shrieking my head off. I was like, so not, not stoked about it. It was, it's still in my mind, the scariest thing I've ever done. I'm glad I did it though, honestly. Like again, you know, that's kind of the cool thing about working for Hawaii Magazine and really working in media um, as like a journalist or a writer is that you'll do things that you would never do otherwise. That's true. Like, I wouldn't, I would have never stayed at the one hotel in on Kwa'i because it's $1,500 a night. And it's not like, I could afford that. Maybe if I was making, if I picked a different degree and I was making a lot more money, I could have afforded that one day. But because of my job, I was able to do that. Like, I don't know. Mm -hmm. And that's really, you know, something I, I still like about writing. And, you know, now that I'm doing kind of more freelance writing stuff is like, I still get to, you know, go out and meet people that I would never meet. You know, I, I talk to people that I would never talk to. I go to places that I would never go to, you know, normally. It, it really... It still is to me like my favorite part of being a writer is like you just get to experience a lot of things that mm -hmm. you otherwise wouldn't. And, you know, when you work for a magazine or you work for a, a major publication, um, you can also do a lot of those things for free, <laughs> which is really which is really great, um, you know, because like, again, like as someone who maybe is a little frugal, I'm really not going to spend fifteen hundred even if I was making a lot of money. I don't think I would spend fifteen hundred bucks a night to stay anywhere. I mean, not even at one hotel, but just like <laughs> Any, anywhere we um, should have got you so... to stay at espacio oh man <laughs> you know what it's my biggest regret but i totally get why we couldn't <laughs> do it but remember that one time it was the the new penthouses at somewhere it was like some oh. super crazy penthouse yes. that opened up it was like Where a timeshare penthouse mm -hmm. i I'm forgot to remember yeah, i remember it I don't even think it was in Waikiki. It might have been in like, I don't know, it was just some super nice building. But they wanted, I would have done it if it was just for web, but they wanted a print feature. Like they wanted something in print. And we couldn't do that because, again, it's like, you know, it's not something that a visitor can do, right? Like you have to own, you have to be a part of this timeshare program. It's not like, right. you know, something that our readers would have enjoyed reading about. Uh, but I would have sure loved to do it. <laughs> Because uh, it was really nice, but no, we never did that. I never stayed at the Espacio either. You got, you should try to stay there, man. Yeah. I'm curious. You get a butler. That's insane. I don't want to stay there, but I want to tour it. I mean, I'm sure they'll let us tour. I don't, I don't need. Oh, to stay for there. sure. Yeah, yeah but I, no. but touring it would be kind of interesting. I just want to see what five thousand dollars a night looks like in Waikiki. I, you know, they're still doing. They're still around, though. I mean, they it must be working for them, like. You know, there are people out there with like a bajillion, bajillion dollars. Like. I remember when I went there to eat dinner one night because I had a prefix dinner that was pretty affordable when it first opened. And the general manager had said to me that they had somebody who had booked 
a room at this fascio for like two and a half years. And he would, he paid it and he would just come in and out like. That person is the one who's keeping the lights on over there then. It yeah. must be. That's like $2 insane. million two dollars or something. Yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I guess, you know, insane. for some people that's just, that's just a drop in the hat, just, you know, yeah. just, that's just change. whatever pocket, pocket change. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So let's yeah. tell the readers or listeners what you're going to be doing. I feel like you're going to come back <laughs> in the hundredth and thirty seventh episode. But right. anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can you can have me on whenever you want. Honestly, <laughs> I, I was in the the Have a Little Will Travel podcast was always one of my favorite parts about the job. I always just enjoy talking. Um, but yeah, I'll be a uh, well. Right now, I'm working as a garden assistant, which is pretty fun. Honestly, it's very nice, but it's all kind of a placeholder until I'm. I'm leaving to Japan. Um, we're looking at September because then it'll kind of be in the fall. Um, but you know, I've uh, I've lived on Oahu. I know this may come as a surprise to some people because people don't think I'm from Hawaii. But I've lived on Oahu my entire life. I was born in the Wahiwa Hospital and stayed on the North Shore, and then I stayed in town. I've never uh, never lived away from Hawaii. Um, so that's kind of the impetus for this move. Um, you know, it's ultimately, uh, was kind of one of the reasons why I, I also end up leaving Hawaii Magazine is so I could kind of start moving on, kind of doing more freelance work and, and being able to make money remotely. So when I'm, I'm living over there, I can still, you know, do some freelance writing, uh, and have income coming in. Um, but yeah, I'm moving to Tokyo, Tokyo specifically where we're looking at, um, because I've never lived anywhere else. And I, I visited Tokyo early last year. And it was the only place I've ever been to uh, where I could see myself living rather than living in uh, Honolulu and Hawaii, hmm. because I, I truly do love living here that much. I mean, it's, you know, I've never left for a reason. Um, it's because I think Honolulu, if you can swing it, is one of the best places uh, to live in the world um, because the people are so nice and the food is so good. Uh, and I, you know, surf and do all of those things. But uh, Tokyo was also really cool uh, it was the only place where i've ever you know really thought i could try living here for a couple of years so yeah that's the plan are you gonna surf i don't know dude i don't think so are you gonna be like something else i'm gonna be something like else a... i'm gonna be a mu musician uh i think uh, really? i know yeah i've started doing my own solo project or not solo but a project that i i front and and do and do all the songwriting for so um you know i'm looking to bring that with me to japan i have a group of very talented musicians that i'm working with right now to get some stuff recorded and kind of bring that brand over with me to tokyo and try to get it get it popping over there but uh yeah that's going to be filling up a lot of my time uh and hopefully yeah hopefully it will be filling the void of of surfing because that is a big void i truly do love surfing um, and I will be coming, hopefully be coming back to Oahu in the summertime for at least a couple of weeks just to, just to get my, my feet wet. But yeah, unfortunately Chiba would, it was still like to get to the shoreline where you want to be surfing is like two and a half hours from Tokyo if you're taking trains and transit. So I don't think I'll be surfing really. It's also cold. The water's really cold. I only like to surf in warm water. It's true. I really don't this, like you're going to be a whole different person, dude. I'm going to be so different. I'm going to be like, I'm going to change it. I should change my name. You know, you should. I should change my whole identity. You should Dude, that'd be so cool. I'm going to change my name to like Alex. Ak I don't Akira. Know. Akira. Hey, yeah, maybe that was my Japanese name in Japanese class. In high was school. it really? Yeah. Akira. That's weird that I would even say that then. It's my favorite anime. That's why it's an anime movie. Maybe that's why you, you've heard of it. I don't maybe. know. Mm. Maybe, maybe. We're running and out of time. And the cats are going with you, by the way? The cats are going with us. That is our biggest cause of concern. But, you know, they'll they'll live. You know, they'll live through a plane ride. I hope. I think they will. Um, but, yeah, no, that's our biggest point of concern. We're going to try to look into, like, anti-anxiety medication and stuff, at least for Ami, because she's getting a little bit older. She's, like, 10 at this point so we don't want to like she's 10 i know when oh. i got ami she was like three years old i got yeah. her like right when i started this job and now she's 10 years old and i mean she still looks exactly the same and it's just kind of chilling but um wow. yeah time has flown yeah i know big moves things are changing 2024 is going to be a good year i think uh i feel good about it 
Although the last time I said I felt good about a year was 2020, which was not a good year. Um, so <laughs> you need to stop saying this is what you need to do. Actually, yeah, man. Yeah. But I got a, I got a good feelings about this year. A lot of good changes. And, and, you know, I'm really excited to see where Hoyt magazine goes and stuff. I'll, I'll definitely keep, keep uh, my eyes peeled and, you know, hopefully I can do some, some writing for you guys and, yeah. you know, people can hopefully still see and maybe even hear from me. I'd, again, I'd love to just guest on the podcast. Uh, I do really enjoy talking. So you can see, I won't even stop talking now that the timer is going down, but I have to stop talking because we have two minutes left. So yeah. I'll, I'll let you do the, I'll let you do No, you it. should do it. Do the, really? yeah. Wow. Oh man, I'm rusty. Where can you All find right. this, Kevin Allen? You can find Hoi Magazine. You can find these show notes and you can find all of Hoi Magazine's articles and content on HoiMagazine.com. You can find all of our social medias at Hoi Magazine. You can email Kat, um, but not me at, I actually don't, I don't even remember the email anymore. Is it editor? We don't even, I don't know. Media you can, is fine. Media. Yeah, media at HoiMagazine.com. Uh, please rate us five stars on whatever your platform you're listening to us. If you can do one thing for me before I leave forever, um, before, you know, for me, my last wish uh, is to rate us five stars on whatever platform you're listening to us on. And if you can also shoot us a comment, we really like those and and they're really good for us as well. Um, but yeah, for now, um, this is me signing off for the foreseeable future. For the um, second time. For the second time. But uh, they have a little how we'll travel podcast. We'll be back in two weeks. I'm, this podcast will die or will not die with me. It'll, 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 it won't even die with Hoi Magazine. It'll just keep going in perpetuity. It'll just keep going. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> someone will do it. <laughs> All right, everyone. We'll see you back in two weeks and I'm sure we'll see Kevin again. We can't get rid of him. You cannot. Bye. <laughs> Bye.